Let's hear it for Anthony Calderon. <laughs> appetizers and she turns and looks at me and she goes would you like to share some of my food and I said no and she goes oh because you look like you might <laughs> <laughs> no that was the nicest way I've ever been called fat in my life <laughs> like I'm 40 years old and I went to public school I thought I'd been called fat in all the ways <laughs> but never the friendly way <laughs> Oh, when you're a fat guy, you become like pretty sensitive to the way people tell you you're fat without ever saying the words, oh shit, that motherfucker is fat. <laughs> like sometimes in a restaurant, a waitress will slip me a Diet Coke instead of a Coke. I was on an airplane a couple months ago, and the flight attendant just dropped a belt extender in my lap without even making an eye contact. <laughs> Fuck you, Sky Waitress. Don't think I didn't notice that I was the only one that had to ask for the whole can of ginger ale. <laughs> and I had a friend once try to pay me for pot with a McDonald's gift card. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't understand why I wasn't okay. <laughs> I said, really? He's like, well, I thought because... <sighs> I don't have a lot of shame about how I look. I once used my weight to get out of a seatbelt ticket in Reno, Nevada. I, I actually said these words to a state trooper's face, I'm too fat for the belt. And then he paused and stared at me for two minutes like he was Robocop using his computer brain, <laughs> trying to assess my lie. He's just like, too fat for a belt. 98% probability. On your way, citizen. <laughs> I'm a fat guy, what I call breathtakingly fat. Uh, that means I have trouble with stares. <laughs> I'm also self-aware fat, which means I won't lie to you and tell you that I have a glandular condition or that I'm big bone. I'm fat because I love eating and I hate doing shit. <laughs> Exercise, fuck that. My heart gets accelerated just getting into the shower. And any time I pass a gym on a bus, I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> I work in a building with a gym now, which my shitty coworkers keep telling me. <laughs> and they keep telling me it's fifteen dollars to join the gym. They're like, hey, you gonna join the gym, Jason? It's fifteen dollars to join the gym. And I tell them, yeah, I know it's fifteen dollars to join the gym, but every time you say fifteen dollars, I hear eighteen beers. <laughs> like, you can magically transform me into a gold medal winning athlete. And that gold medal would never make me feel as good as I do when I'm sleeping off a day drunk. <laughs> and I have them tell me, well, you can get a treadmill on Craigslist. That way you can work out at home. And I tell them a treadmill is not so you can work out at home. A treadmill is that so when you die working out at home, you will be found by someone you know. <laughs> oh. I get, you know, I'm, I'm okay with how I look. I'm, I'd say I'm built like a candle. I'm pretty hot on top, but the rest looks like melting. <laughs> I had to go shopping the other day uh, because I had to stand up in a buddy's wedding, and that means I needed clothes that didn't have the words iron or maiden on them. <laughs> Shopping is the first place because no matter what store I go into, everybody looks at me like I'm there to steal Sudafed. I'm like, you are a fish market. You don't even have food. That's why I like shopping on the internet. That is because when you look like this, you don't want to bring another human being into the process it takes to put clothes on it. I got to think, you know, shopping on the internet, that's just what I like to do, but you can't do that when you have to get fitted for wedding clothes, so I had to go to the men's warehouse, which means that at least two people are going to get embarrassed. Because <laughs> under here, this is not good. This looks like what happens if you put tattoos on ice cream and then drop it at the zoo. <laughs> I'm serious, I got bad stuff going on under here. Like, from here to here, that's the only part of my body that doesn't grow hair. Unless you count one little patch right here that feels like a cat's tongue. 
I got stretch marks that you could fit a coin in. <laughs> and a lot of people get concerned about going through the body screener at the airport because they think you're gonna people are gonna look at their genitals and I just pray that my lackluster cock is enough of an extract a distraction so that the people at the transit security don't notice the scar from a boil that I had for four months that leak pus like it was like it was drawing a paycheck. <laughs> but you know, uh, I have lost the weight recently. I lost twenty pounds. Uh, you don't have to clap because I don't know how it happened. <laughs> it certainly wasn't because of anything resembling effort. Uh, I had a physical and the nurse told me, oh, you lost 20 pounds, and I couldn't even hear that as good news. My immediate reaction was, oh, shit, I have a tumor. <laughs> and then I told my girlfriend, and she's like, oh, I'm hella jealous, baby. You lost 20 pounds. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I'm probably dying, baby. And she goes, still 20 pounds. <laughs> and now I mean, that, that weight loss didn't inspire me. I'm just hard to do one of those diets where you don't use any, uh, or you don't eat any, you know, starch, refined carbohydrates, sugar, that sort of thing. Very high protein. But that's not going so well for me because... The other day at work, somebody left six donuts in the break room, and that means I ate six donuts. <laughs> and I know that they were for sharing, but I tell you, I like six donuts a hell of a lot more than I like my coworkers. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming out, everybody, and being a part of this. Go out there, support the place, because the best way to deal with stuff like this is just not be afraid of your neighbors. Go out and have fun. Let's bring Anthony Calderon back to the stage.